Hey, what's up everyone? Brian Schild, Determined Dad. It's kind of out on a morning walk here. It's finally warming up in Arizona, so I can kind of do that, you know. And this bright light from my phone is distracting, so I'll just do the best I can. But I was hanging out with a buddy last night, and we were talking about food. And what we feed our kids, and what we feed ourselves, and how we're kind of tweaking our diets to kind of optimize our health and just be the best men we can. Like, he's a really good talk, really good guy. And... So I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about how we feed our children and why we do what we do and what works for us, you know, for anyone that might be looking to tweak their diet. Uh, so first thing I'll say is that there's an amazing book called How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy by Paul Check, which I've talked about before, but this book really did change my life where he breaks down individual categories of food and he also breaks down, um, oh, let's go this way, he also breaks down what the terminology means of different food, right? So I'll start off by saying that how we fed our son since he was born about two years ago, I mean, for the first year, I mean, he he basically pretty much almost exclusively breastfed for like the first year, which I know not everybody can do that, but fortunately we were able to, so that was a big benefit. But once he actually started eating foods, we've pretty much only been feeding him organic or certified organic produce and meat as best as we could find it that is again organic uh free range no antibiotics non-gmo blah 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 blah. you know etc etc um or locally sourced right and <clears throat> oh and he's also pretty much had a fruit and veggie smoothie probably every other morning on average uh, again, since he started eating actual food. So the, the reason, the reason why we go for the organic or the certified organic produce, we'll start with that, right? Now I'll try to keep this video short cause I got to get jogging here, but the, the reason we go for that produce is, uh, the farming practices and how it's grown, right? So when you have like 350 million people living in America and less than 2% of them are farmers, in order to grow enough food to actually feed everybody, you have to um, perform really kind of disgusting farming practices in order to get enough food to actually keep everybody alive, right? So whether it's, you know, pesticides, whether it's other um, chemicals, whether it's like growth hormones to make crops grow faster, altering seeds in some capacity, right? Um, irradiating food as it's shipped from overseas to keep it good while it's on the shelves or whatever, right? There's a whole bunch of different things that are kind of messed up that they have to do, but it is kind of almost for a good purpose of, you know, again, literally feeding everybody, but there's long-term effects to all of everything that they do, right? Trace amounts of those chemicals allegedly could end up in your body over time, right? Over years and years and years, different uh, metals, different chemical trace amounts, and there's also the fact that the food that you're eating isn't 100% whole and living and raw uh, as it would normally be found in like an organic garden or in nature or whatever, right? So, you know, if you kind of come from a naturalistic point of view of, you know, assuming, you know, humans have been here for hundreds or, you know, thousands of years and we've been eating the same type of way for thousands of years, our bodies would be used to getting food in a certain manner. So having it all change over the last hundred years can have drastic impact on us as people, right? So that's the produce. And then the meat, kind of the same thing, you know, getting it uh, grass fed, pasture raised, um, or free range of its eggs, right? Organic, blah, 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 all the things. Let's get the light back on. Actually, I don't think I need the light actually. It's lightening up now. But doing all that stuff, <clears throat> It, it's kind of the same thing, right? Again, the growth hormones that are put in chickens, let's say, to make them grow insanely fast, so that way they're able to, you know, meet their production amounts, right? But that can get into people, right? So you have people that can be incredibly overweight um, or taller, actually. They're finding people are actually getting taller over time, um, even though there's no real correlation as far as, like, you know, the the ethnic or genetic makeup of America, there's no real reason why the height should be going up, which is kind of interesting. 
but there's a lot of stuff that messes with people's bodies. So, you know, once you kind of read those books, once you read what these terms mean, organic versus certified organic versus USDA choice, you know, versus all these different things, um, you know, there's really only kind of one way to go from there, right? Um, so I guess we'll kind of cover that real quick too. So um, organic means that at any point in the last three years, to my understanding, right, the last time I checked, at any point in the last three years, the farm or the farmer could have decided to stop using chemicals to alter their food in any way, right? So when you buy something that's organic, they literally could have decided to just stop using chemicals yesterday, right? So there is some flexibility with what you're getting when you purchase organic, but hopefully overall you're getting, you know, what you're actually wanting, which is chemical free, unaltered, just naturally grown food. Um, and then certified organic, when you see the term certified organic, that's actually special because that means that they've been monitored for over three years without producing their food in any kind of harmful way. So if you're able to find certified organic, which is rare, you can be pretty well assured that it's safe to eat, which is why the Food and Drug Administration is actually pretty awesome. And the EPA is pretty awesome. And all these different protection agencies that we have to help us to try to eat healthy are pretty great, right? So we've been feeding our son that way. And just anecdotally, how it's kind of been working out for us is that, um, you know, and of course some of it could be genetic, some of it could be whatever, right? Uh, my wife being a stay-at-home mom. But anecdotally, whenever he's been sick, he's been sick like three times. Uh, he bounces back like rapidly, like within a day. Where other kids in our area that have the same illness, I think RSV was going around for a little bit. Um, other kids that have the same illness, they're out of commission for like four or five days. And we've also noticed other children that get sick fairly routinely. Like, like I don't know, like every couple months, a lot of kids are just very sick. And he, again, he bounces right back and he almost rarely gets visibly sick. So his body's very strong. Uh, for a two-year-old, for a two-year-old, he was trying to close the door the other day. He was playing with the door, which wasn't good. We had to correct that. But he was playing with the door, and he was trying to push the door closed on me. And the boy is strong. All right? So that's kind of that. A little bit on food. I'll get more of a coherent thought together. Probably make another video about this. But uh, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, like, subscribe, share. All that stuff really helps out. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. And have a wonderful day. Peace.